Hi everybody, um, so this is perhaps the most important farming discussion that I have ever made and studied in my lifetime. Um, or uh, because it basically involves both the ocean and islands and the equator and basically a lot of natural ha habitat um, that should be primarily wildlife and wilderness, um, but there is a lot of population uh, being added into this area. So let's start by looking at a population map of Southeast Asia. So you can basically see, we're gonna basically primarily talk about uh, Philippines and Indonesia, and you can see uh, Indonesia is primarily on the island of Java, and then there's not a whole lot of people on the other islands, but there's starting to be quite a lot. Actually on Borneo here and uh, Sulawesi, um, even on Sumatra here, um, and even on the peninsula here in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, Singapore. Um, so, primarily most of the farming is actually going on in Thailand right now. Um, there's basically a lot of farmland there um, in this kind of valley region. So, let's look at the farmland. You can see here Thailand and then heading over into the uh, Philippines and you can see even part of Vietnam and uh, so basically this is feeding a lot of places even the United States gets rice for instance uh, from Thailand um, and here you have Philippines right uh, primarily on the main island here and then actually Indonesia and actually quite a lot of farming uh, even uh, questionable farming so these red zones and yellow zones are debatable um, maybe even shouldn't be farming in some of these regions however there are some farms that have been detected in that region um, you can see here on the south part of Sulawesi um, so this is an extremely important discussion basically because it's uh, wilderness and wildlife and islands. So let's look at the habitat here so you can kind of see. So in India, this is actually a lot of national parks. It's the only area of India that's really left uh, that has some wildlife in it. It's west coast of India. Um, and you can see also Sri Lanka. So, but even in here, this is pretty much jungle, um, is this red zone. Um, probably shouldn't be living in there, but uh, there are quite a lot of people here on the island of Java and also in the Philippines. And you can see along the coast here of Vietnam. Um, but this dark red is the uh, only other place that we really see that is in the jungle of Africa. Um, and then also here in uh, the Amazon uh, is pretty much the biggest area. So, but actually this area is quite significant, um, not only because of uh, the land, but because of the water and the fish. So um, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat fish even, and I try not to eat any meat either. Uh, and so I've been that way for more than a decade, but um, there's a lot of fish in this region. Um, so we might even, try to even look at the fish situation i was very shocked to see all the fishing going on even way out into the ocean here so there's these islands here they come you know they might travel a thousand miles or more um just to go fishing um at least 500 sometimes um off the coast of china and japan so a lot of that maybe is japanese fishing and at one point in history japan fishers fisheries even came all the way across the pacific ocean to america to get fish so I don't know how they get the fuel for that, but apparently they're able to do it. But here is the climate map, so you can kind of see um, quite a bit different um, than the United States. Let's just look at the United States compare in Europe, so you can kind of see. So basically very green, uh, you know, 70 degrees year round in uh, some of these areas. But, uh, you know, you can basically say that it's quite a different climate. The only thing we have kind of comparable is maybe the tip of Miami get a lot of rain down there but even that isn't the hard dark red that you see uh, here near the equator so this is a climate that we're totally unfamiliar with um, and uh, the rainy season is extreme uh, sometimes getting a full meter of rain in one month or more so can you imagine getting a meter of rain um, so it's pretty much a huge uh, deal here I'll just zoom in a little bit more so you can kind of see some details so uh, but basically this is the climate here um, i'll try to look at a rain map here in addition to this so let's look at the big picture for a second in terms of rivers 
there is a lot of volcanoes here, but actually it's not the kind of rivers that we see in the mainland. Like this is out of the tallest, these are 30,000 feet mountains. So you'd expect quite a lot of river system um, here in China as well. But basically in Southeast Asia on these islands, we get a lot of rivers, well, more rivers than most of the islands on Sumatra here, a couple rivers here, and then a lot of rivers in Borneo. Now this is the only real habitat uh, major island on earth that is com almost you know there's still a lot of people on this as you saw on the map but there is uh, quite a lot of wildlife there so that's very important to think about um, as well as Papua New Guinea here you can see kind of some very interesting rivers heading out of the mountain range so there's a mountain range kind of in the middle here and then heading out um, I think you can add the mountains here let's see where is it uh, basic gray white background uh, topographic um i thought there was a mountain well this is a sea map this can be kind of helpful uh, to look at so you can kind of see the sea as well as the rivers that kind of shows up a little bit better actually so kind of interesting just to see here and you can zoom in and see exactly what's going on with the rivers even though it doesn't quite show up on the main map sometimes so you can't really see that but uh super helpful um so we're going to be studying all these regions and looking at the farms here so i am not sure what to say about this um i'm a little bit vaguely familiar with what's going on in manila i've been looking at the rice fields these are some of the uh these are actually uh, world heritage sites so they're some of the most important rice farming in the world is actually uh, located here in manila as well as some of these islands so it can be unbelievable farming in terms of sustainability too you can see a little spot here so when you're dealing with an island uh, basically you have to have your own water supply your own electric um, all the basic necessities have to come from your island uh, or they have to be shipped in which is sometimes very difficult um, there's not even airports to some of these smaller islands um, and it is very interesting overall in terms of the farming situation. So one interesting thing is that uh, starting in about 2013, the farming situation has been getting worse in terms of output exports. So you can see that in general, it's been getting better though, um, but uh, it's been going down in terms of exports. So that's an interesting map to see. I think I got this map too. You can isolate it. Uh, by agriculture and then see exactly what's going on so rice is big but a lot of this is because of thailand so we really have to take out thailand um, if we wanted to look at this carefully we probably should just do indonesia uh, and you can put indonesia in here and then see basically what's going on for indonesia so you see a lot of palm oil which is also very strange um, but uh, that's kind of how that works there um, and then you can also do Philippines as well. Um, and this will show us quite a little different bananas. And actually, so Philippines is probably doing a little bit better on the food side than Indonesia. Uh, but uh, you can just keep this as Southeast Asia, uh, Southeastern Asia. Yes, so I'll just keep this as Southeast Asia and you can do the major exports here this is for all exports so you can kind of see that they're actually shipping quite a lot to China and even well most to China so uh, and then the global share is interesting which we already looked at and I think there was an overtime map that is interesting as well uh, to take a look at so you can kind of see uh, electronics actually being quite a big part of Southeast Asia but um, agriculture actually being pretty big as well so let's take a look at the soil map um, again soil is very interesting because this is a lot of volcanic soil and you can see the mountainous area through here um, which uh, is not really farmable because of the hills and things but there's a complex soil uh, perhaps most in Papua New Guinea and fortunately that also means for complex environments you have a lot of different wildlife so I would say pretty much stay away from the farming situation here in Papua New Guinea try to focus on where there already is a lot of people like in Java or in this main island uh, north part of Philippines and then you can kind of see and then actually all of this uh, Sumatra and Malaysia is starting to become uh, 
while it's turning into a lot of farmland here so um, this kind of purple dirt area is quite good as well but actually this is some of the best is the floodplain but then again it's flooding so you can't really farm on it let's take another look at the population grid here we can zoom in into uh, Philippines and kind of see what's going on so you can kind of see the detail here um, it's quite extraordinary the detail in the population situation so there's kind of a footprint right in through here a population so we can also zoom in and see where the farming is uh, as well and that's going to take a little bit to load sorry about this uh, but you can kind of see uh, it's loading this so the other thing you can do um, which i would highly recommend is changing the opacity of this and then you can start to see exactly where the farm line is like that so that shows you kind of some details in the farmland picture um, so you can kind of zoom in and out and see that so let's just keep it just about like that for now so we can look at both so I'm gonna zoom out again here um, and you can kind of see more parts of basically Philippines here and then we'll go back to the Indonesia perspective as well and the island here so one of the big concerns I have is on this island because it's a big question one of the things i really hope for is to maybe redo the wildlife plan for indonesia and sumatra so there is uh, very big problems um, in terms of wildlife there is um, you know just huge problems so uh, with uh, particularly with the orangutans i've been reading about um, there's maybe only a few hundred left in some areas so you can kind of start to see the farming situation here let's do the same thing because this is such an important island so we want to see primarily where that farming spots are on that right so you can kind of see in that here so let's look at jakarta as well and that region so i'll zoom in here a little bit more let's see if we can zoom in here that might be the biggest we can get so this island of jakarta and then we'll see you can start to see some of the population actually being early so the farming kind of moved just outside the city here on the north side um and a little bit east of the city and you can also see some of this other stuff uh being farmed even up onto the hills here and then down in that valley um, so some of this is like even on the volcano which is kind of a question uh, right inside the volcano um, I don't know how they would do that but pretty interesting stuff uh, to think about um, so uh, and then you can see kind of maybe the volcano spilled in over on this side but then there's farming in here and in here and like that um, so uh, let's zoom out a little bit uh, let me pause this for a second so my mom was born in Indonesia in Jakarta um, but uh, this island my grandfather traveled to and got sick uh, but it's one of the most interesting islands in the world by far so the farming here is extraordinarily interesting um, and you can see basically what's going on with some of those blue areas is what I'm primarily looking at here and where that is so you kind of see there's a section right in here that we got um, and then another section up in here and then some other questionable so these red areas are kind of questionable farming zones um, and even some urban you can see it's pretty mm -hmm. urban in there so there might maybe some of that is even urban farming um, so next i want to take a quick look at the forestry so again you can see there's a big forest here and you can actually see some of the farming kind of getting into that which is these uh, lighter colors so actually this is uh, some of the only forest you can see that's pretty much all farmed out and populated in the Philippines as well as in the island of Java and even Sumatra, right? So this really shouldn't be uh, populated that much. It should be more high density housing. Here's some of the river map. Again, you can take a look at it to, to compare again as we're doing it. And here's a list of the main crops. So again, we see palm oil, rice, sugar cane, cassava, corn, coconuts being huge. I love coconuts, bananas, and some other pineapples. So if you're looking for the global map, again, you can see, kind of compare. This is actually quite a significant region of uh, 
basically uh, people and important uh, climate. If you don't like that other map on Google Earth, you can use the map on uh, just uh, maps.google.com and kind of get this map here to see and you can zoom in and look at all the farms pretty good here as well. The data that I got is from this website, FAOSTAT. You can definitely take a look at that as well. So we did talk a little bit about boating. Here is how complex all the shipping lines are. Now, a lot of this goes through Singapore and actually around the world. So you can add vessels to this. And what I would do is add the fishing vessels and you can start to see where the fishing is going on. And you actually have to zoom out to see what's going on in general. So you can start to see quite a lot of fishing uh, over there in India right now. Um, and then even out into the ocean like we were talking about earlier. So you kind of have to zoom in to see, but uh, basically that gives you an idea for the fishing. So some areas I would say even off of the coast here, this is a big warning sign because once we start to get a lot of fishing here, we also start to get a lot of land-based farming. Um, and so maybe a lot of that is maybe from Indonesian ships, perhaps, uh, but you can kind of see some of the tracks in here Again, fishing in this region probably be would be okay, but uh, again, it's starting to, when they bring it onto the shore, then they need other types of food than just fish because they want to have a balanced meal. Uh, so it starts to mean that the whole entire island becomes a farm rather than a forest. You can already see some of the forest and the farms are kind of the lighter color here, kind of encroaching into the main area and an unbelievable amount of fishing going on off of the coast of Vietnam, right? That's just a huge amount of fishing. And you can also see in China here and other areas. So, uh, but uh, that would actually, this seems to concern me. It seems to me so many fishing boats that you'd wonder where are the fish. So they have to mate somewhere. So in these island regions, you know, a lot of the fish maybe migrate uh, to the shallower waters. Um, that's why the other map is so important to look at because you can kind of see right in here, they were fishing and there actually is a lot of breeding done in these regions. So it's probably best to, and the shallower islands and smaller islands to keep those as not fishable and especially along this coast here um, but uh, that was actually <laughs> kind of a very frightening image on the Vietnam side I am kind of shocked about this I haven't seen it anywhere in the world is so much like that and you can also see right along here in Malaysia being a huge number of fishing boats and I can even zoom in and it gets even more it looks like so uh, that's a lot yeah so <laughs> I mean talking about uh, one fishing boat just getting all the fish there and there and moving around and every day doing that I don't know um, so that kind of makes me worried a little bit about that situation so I just want to look at this really quick but I'm gonna first look try to get you the uh, water rainfall maps because those are super interesting to see so I'll just show you how I did this with the rainfall maps first of all you probably want to get the satellite imagery for this um, so you can grab the whole earth here um, and you can explore the data here, and I think it's under climate. Where was it? Uh, let me see here. Climate and precipitation, historical precipitation. Now, there's a couple different versions here. I actually like looking at both the three month and the uh, per average monthly. So, the interesting thing about the three month one is it gets you a little bit more detail. This just shows you the averages over uh, many years. So we're gonna look at that first just because maybe the data will be a little bit more reliable. Now, for some reason you have to zoom in on this, otherwise it doesn't work properly. Just a bug with the situation here. So um, we'll go through here and look at each month um, just because it's so interesting to see how the rainfall works. Uh, in Southeast Asia and really you could look at the entire earth. So this is January, right? And then we got February coming in here. I'll just try to do March So now we start to see a whole lot of rain Now remember this is almost getting to be a meter in one month in some areas So you got May coming in now you start to get a full meter in some of these areas 
Now, again, even in India, they still need irrigation. So there is a lot of rain coming in right on this side here, but you can start to see in the Philippines, June getting just totally tons of rain there in the Philippines. And now you get even more in August. And then September, kind of some new spots coming in. October and November. Now it's kind of going on the opposite side of the island. And you also see it here on the opposite side there. And December. So actually hitting it really hard right here in Malaysia. So um, super interesting to look at the whole Earth too. I definitely recommend taking a look at these maps carefully. So let's go back to these maps because we were looking at the water. So you can kind of see the river system. So there's just so much rain, but actually, you know, <clears throat> there's other parts of the world that get even more rain. I um, wish I could show you the full precipitation map of the Earth. Uh, you can look that up for yourself, but you can kind of see it. it's really cool to see per month. Um, the three month ones are significantly different <clears throat> on this graph. Um, I'll just load this up really quick. I'll turn this off here and just load up the three month one. So. It says global three month per month. So this three month one, nice part about it, let's see. So it actually has per year. So you can start to see that this year was actually quite a bit different than those monthly averages. So we're getting just totally, totally different data on this. So you start to see these three months picture of how this is just actually quite a bit different. So you're getting a full meter of rain just everywhere, right? <laughs> and you can see basically what how different that data was so super interesting just to see um, especially if you're planning on working in some of these areas I think it'd be totally fun to get that much rain um, in a matter of a month or so what I grabbed here was the uh, global cropland one kilometer so that gives you each pixel is about essentially one kilometer so it gives us pretty accurate um, details on where the farm line is and <clears throat> actually i'm leaving all the really fun stuff uh, for everyone else zooming in here and actually finding the farm um like for example if you're looking at manila or jakarta um <clears throat> finding the farms that um, you think are interesting to go and visit <clears throat> and help out and uh, maybe even talk with and get to know the owners there and also take a look at these soil maps because sometimes you can see um, the soil actually the soil is so good uh, in southeast asia pretty much everywhere um but um there is some volcanoes here um, that make it a little bit complicated not sure if you looked at this map yet but this is a google earth map you can download the kml file and actually get the actual pixel data so you see all of southeast asia the um, actual farmland locations um, and i really love this because this has got the farm schedule so you can kind of see how because it's in the equator, you kind of have uh, corn, for example, starting here and ending there. Pretty fast season, and you have it starting here for the rainy season. This is the dry region. Um, peanuts, uh, you can see planting, growing, and harvesting. Uh, so kind of taking quite a long time for harvesting. And then peanuts in the south, so you have different uh, north and south. <laughs> and then rice, you have actually have three seasons for rice, which is unbelievable amount. Uh, farming so you can do it three times in a year so and then you also have Philippines Malaysia and Thailand so um, and then Vietnam actually being pretty complicated here as well you saw the rain maps uh, but uh, anyway so uh, hopefully these will help in terms of visiting so if you're interested in checking out a farm you might want to see the planting phase right or here's the planting phase sorry and this is the growing phase and then the harvesting phase so you can kind of plan uh when you want to uh, visit uh during each part of the season okay so uh, again here's zooming out at the population map so it is super helpful to see uh the population on this you can the fao data is so awesome that you can load it in here with the farming data uh, i can kind of show you how to do that socioeconomic i think it is uh, human population here it is so human population with uh, density so uh, and now you start to see here but this is just loading just the population so we kind of got to phase it out 
So what you could do is you can look at the farming region with the population and you can see it's kind of done here in Jakarta. You can see that basically almost the population is even more significant <laughs> than the farmland, which is kind of a catastrophe there, right? Um, and you can also see in uh, here up in the Philippines. So that's with the opacity. So it's kind of hard to see. So you might want to just turn it off and just focus on just the farmland and then look at the satellite imagery and actually zoom in. But it helps to look at everything um, and you can kind of see. So I hope this has been a fun review of what's going on in Southeast Asia. This is certainly one of my favorite areas to study just because all the islands and sophistication of what's going on in terms of the Earth's activity. There's volcanoes. Didn't even show you the volcano map. I uh, wish I had time, but I should probably show you the volcano map and the earthquake map. There's just an unbelievable amount of earthquakes every single day, uh, extremely active part of Earth. Um, so Earth is just basically moving and creating uh, fresh uh, ground and interesting stuff. Okay, so I grabbed the data so you can see what's been going on. So basically up in Alaska, you get a lot of earthquakes, but right here is where we also get a ton of really big, they get even 9.0s in through here. So you can see there's kind of earthquake belt through here and then around through here, and then actually goes right into the Philippines and then hanging up to Taiwan and even Japan with that big earthquake that also affected the nuclear reactor there. That was really significant. Uh, the spill was way out into the ocean kind of scary to think about what that does to the fish um, because uh, all that nuclear fuel is in the ocean for at least like a thousand years so that's a very serious problem in terms of the food especially since there's, since there's so much fishing out there so um anyway so some interesting stuff uh, to look at so going back to the farming map again you can see um, look at what happened to India here, right? And then look at what happened to China in terms of farming. Essentially 100% farmed, 100% farmed through there. Um, so, you know, it's kind of scary to think what's going to happen to some of these islands. we got to kind of think about how to protect it for wildlife as well as looking at that fishing question is super important. So I hope you've enjoyed this study. Um, let me know what kind of questions you got. Here's a population map. Feel free to zoom in on all these. You'll have the links in the video. And I love talking about this kind of stuff. I like looking at the details. This was kind of probably the most boring part. Um, most fun part is actually studying it, making friends, and actually really trying to work on the farming stuff. So this is just kind of introduction, but it's certainly a lot of details, a lot of information covering a lot of different areas. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know uh, if you'd like to try to work together on something. Thank you so much. Ciao.